In the blink of an eye, August is over, the summer holidays are gone, and it'll be Christmas before you know it. So here is everything you need to know about the rental market in Bath and beyond from August 2023. Well, here are the usual statistics that we look at in these monthly roundups, and these follow similar trends from recent months, but we are starting to see some subtle variations and changes to the market. In short, it's taking a little bit longer to rent property. This average letting time of 18 days is higher than we've been accustomed to for several months. But then that is traditional. September normally heralds the end of what we call peak season in the rental market, so things will start to calm down a little bit over the coming weeks. We're still achieving good rents for uh, properties that are on the market at 99% of asking rent. And actually, I've delved into more detail in previous uh, episodes of these roundups about the differences between the flat market and the house market. Uh, and it's worth noting that every single property that we let uh, in August that was let below asking rent was a house. So we're still seeing that division in the market between houses and flats. Um, and in terms of rental increases at 6%, that's about average probably for the last 12 months. So still a very good, solid, reliable rental market. Still way more tenants looking to rent properties than there are available properties on the market. So it's still a decent time to be bringing your home to the rental market if you're thinking of doing so. In terms of interest that we're receiving from potential tenants registering with us, well, we have seen a dip in interest in September, down 41% uh, compared to July, sorry, August that is, down 41% compared to July 2023, and down by 28% compared to August of last year. So we've certainly seen a decline of interest from going into July into August, and a milder uh, decline when you compare it to year on year, which reflects that traditional seasonal change of things starting to quieten down as we proceed through the late summer months and towards autumn. Now, one of the things that is probably at the forefront of a lot of landlords' minds has been changes in mortgage interest rates, especially if you're finding yourself coming to the end of a fixed deal. I've spoken to a great many landlords who have been concerned about what's going to happen to their mortgage payments once their fixed term ends. So to get some expert advice on this, I spoke to Doug from Lansdowne Financial Services, a really excellent mortgage broker here in Bath, who gave me his thoughts. Uh, the signs are positive. To be honest, I think it's. I think it, it feels in the industry at the moment that we hit a bit of a peak in terms of interest rates around July, August time. I think one of the the big things that drive mortgage rates are swap rates, which is what banks basically exchange money at between themselves, um, and they have been falling, okay. albeit slightly. So don't get don't want anyone to get too excited at the moment, but they're definitely falling starting to come down. I think the market's becoming a lot more competitive at the moment. I think lenders are quite quiet currently. And I think that natural competition between banks, we're kind of seeing lenders, they've got targets to hit that they would have set internally. And I think that with the market being quiet, swap rates coming down slightly, we've seen positive signs in the last four to six weeks, which is good. I think inflation is the key driver for me to be able to answer that question. And again, I think core inflation remains high, quite sticky, which I think will be the driving factor. Um, but again, signs are positive. I think that that natural competition, as I mentioned, between banks will potentially force them to offer interest rates lower than what they might have done anyway. I think when will interest rates fall, which is a million dollar question, no one knows. I think inflation, as I say, holds the key, well, literally the key to that. In terms of length of a fixed rate product or a variable rate product, it's, it's very much down to the person themselves, their, their longer term plans for the property, whether they intend to keep it as a long term investment or potentially reassess the market in a few years time and make that decision then. I think the, the biggest advice I can give to anyone looking at a new mortgage product now is to really understand the cost of that deal. And the reason I say that is we've seen a big return of uh, percentage product fees in the last 12 months. There was actually an announcement from Precise, one of the big buy-to-let lenders today, launching some, some of the lowest five-year deals that we've seen in a while, but it had a 7% product fee attached to it. So if you borrow 200,000, it's a 14,000 pound product fee, which is much higher than we've used to be seeing before in the past. So I think the best advice I can give is obviously understand the length of time that you need that product for, 
but really look at what that total cost is of each individual deal as well, factoring in those big setup fees that we're seeing at the moment. Well, that's about all for this month's roundup. Only just to say before I leave, if you're wondering what's happening with the legislative agenda with the Renters Reform Bill, the short answer is nothing. However, we have reached the end of the summer recess, so Parliament will be returning soon, and it'll be interesting to see if that goes back on the agenda immediately. I'll probably have another update for that next month. Until then, bye-bye.